In the last vignette, we were talking about the importance of knowing God before we can love Him. It is easy for the human mind to know God, but a little difficult to learn how to love Him. Then we mentioned the fact that it is important for us to know God as much as we can because upon it is based our love for Christ. So if we know little about God, we would know little about Christ. If we know little about God, we shall only have a little love for God because love depends so much on our knowledge. We reminded you what was taught in Catechism, that the role of man is to know God, to love Him, and to serve Him. So you can see the first step is to know, and only after can we love. For strictly speaking, you cannot love anybody whom you do not know. And so we must concentrate quite hard on knowing who is God, so our love for God would be commensurate to our knowledge. Then we mentioned the fact that our knowledge of Christ would depend upon our knowledge of God, because Christ is God, and more or less their qualities would be the same, except that Christ was a man and a God, while God the Father was God alone. If your knowledge of God is small, there is no way by which you can know Christ. And that was what was wrong with the Jewish people. They could not recognize Christ. They did not know Christ because their knowledge of God was so little. Maybe they never learned, maybe they forgot, but in any way, it was so little. So when Christ came, they could not recognize Him. And unable to recognize Him, they could not love and follow Him. Love has been defined as obedience to the commands of God. And so in the Old Testament, the chosen people had to obey God in order to love Him. When you know the commands of God, you know God. But it is when you obey the commands of God that you begin to love God. Christ had often repeated this, that to love God is to obey His commands. If you love me, He said, keep my commandments. And so the same thing with Christ. If you know all the commandments of Christ, you know Christ, but it is only when you obey or keep the commandments of Christ can you say that you love Christ. And then Scripture tells us that love is the fulfillment of the law, meaning to say only when you have obeyed all the commandments of Christ. Let us leave behind the commandments of the Old Testament because they had been perfected in the New Testament. So our concentration now should simply be obedience to the commands of Christ. When you have obeyed all the commands of Christ, then we say, you have fulfilled all the law, and therefore now love God. Or putting it another way, love now dwells in you. And since the spirit of love is embodied in the Holy Spirit, then we say that we possess now the Holy Spirit. Then we mentioned the fact that one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to remind you of all the commandments of Christ. So you see there is the assumption that you knew and you have obeyed all the commandments of Christ and now 
the role of the Holy Spirit is simply to remind you of what you already know. And so I put this question to you and ask yourself whether you know the commandments of Christ or you recall all the commandments of Christ and that would be a sign that the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Now love or divine love or we insisted using the word charity because that is in effect divine love is the unifying bond of the Catholic Church. So strictly speaking, the Catholic Church, which is bound together by charity, is composed of all the people who have obeyed all the commandments of Christ and now bound together by love or by the Holy Spirit. That is, strictly speaking, the Catholic Church. That is why it is one holy Catholic apostolic, because love is the source of all holiness. So when everybody or a group of few chosen people have reached the fulfillment of the law, they become one and holy. What happened to those who are still trying to obey the commands of Christ and have not fully obeyed them? Well, strictly speaking, strictly, they do not make up the Catholic Church yet because the Catholic Church is supposed to be the bride of Christ and the bride of Christ is supposed to be a virgin. And a virgin is defined as one, strictly speaking again, as one who had obeyed all the commandments of Christ or one who is only concerned in doing God's will. And therefore, if we Catholics are still obeying some of the commands and are supposed to learn the others yet, or as happens, we are still trying to find out what are the commands of Christ, then we might be included in what you call the many, but definitely not among the few who were chosen. Then in the last two vignettes, we made a distinction between the works of mercy, like for instance, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, sheltering the homeless, and charity. You see the works of mercy, which Commonly, everybody is referring to as charity. It's not really charity. These are just a few of the commandments of Christ. It is only when you have obeyed all the commandments of Christ can we say that we have reached the level of charity or divine charity. And so these works of mercy are for people who are trying to to be saints, who are desirous to be saints, while charity means you are already a saint. It is a fact that charity is not something that you do. It is something that happens to you, that somebody comes into your soul, that the Holy Spirit with the Father and the Son dwells into your soul. Now that is charity. And the way to obtain that is through the works of mercy or the commandments of Christ. When one is just trying to become a saint, he has to really perform three things to attain sanctity. Prayer, fasting, and good works. Now the problem is this, that many times when they do this fasting, prayers, and good works, they do it wrongly, in which case, instead of coming out as good works, it comes out as bad works. But a saint, one who has charity, is just the opposite. Everything that they do, everything, can be considered as good works, even if they are doing nothing, that nothing is a good work. 
Well, of course, that looks like nothing externally, but actually is their minds and hearts being continually raised to God that makes their doing nothing good work. In fact, in scriptures, some of the people that Christ described as great lovers of God were doing nothing. It is narrated in the story of Christ that one day he was in a place and there was a woman behind him. She was not even in front. She was behind. And she was not doing anything except washing, washing the feet of Christ. And Christ looks at those people around him and said, watch her. She has love much. And so you see, if you reach the level of charity, even if what you are doing is simply washing clothes or washing plates or just washing, you can be expressing great love for God. You don't have to do great things. Even small home chores can be done with great love for God. We mentioned in the last vignette that today it's so rare to find people who really love God, for people who do things for the love of God. And the reason for this is because we do not know God, we do not know Christ. I recall during my seminary days, we had a subject on God that took one year during our theologate, and the book we used was so thick, and still we ended up not knowing God. You never know God through textbooks. You can only know God through prayer, silence, solitude, and contemplation. We are living in bad days because instead of loving God, we have loved the world because we know the world more than we know God. Let us go back to divine revelation because in it, we shall learn how to love God and at the same time, we can learn how we stand before God, whether we truly are lovers of God or enemies of God. God bless you.